In this episode, I tell you how to defeat many of today's TV's enhancements. So stick around. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here, the home theater geek. In this episode, I'm going to continue my discussion on how to optimize the picture quality in your TV. In episode 376, I talked about the first step, which is to select the right picture mode. And that would be movie, cinema, calibrated, or filmmaker mode. Depending on your TV, it might be called any one of those. But that will automatically set the controls more or less for the best possible picture quality in terms specifically about how the director intended the image to look. Now, you can change that if you want, but I'm an advocate for watching things the way the content creator wanted you to see it with the type of color and the type of contrast and so on. So uh, this is what I'm going to be talking about. Now, in this episode, I'm going to go over some of the controls that picking the right picture mode probably disabled. But I thought I'd dig a little deeper this time and talk about some of those controls. And you can go look at them and see once you've selected cinema or movie or calibrated or filmmaker mode, you know, did it really turn them off? And you might even experiment a little bit about turning them off and on and seeing what happens. But I want to make sure you understand that there's no way you're going to break your TV. Uh, You can can work those controls all you like. It's not going to break your TV. If you find yourself lost and you can't get back to where you were, just go back and select that picture mode again. and, And that should reset them. If it doesn't, there's usually a reset button that you can hit in the menu system that will turn everything back to factory. So can't break it, not a problem. Now I'm gonna use the common names for these, generic names for these controls. They may be called something different in your set, but hopefully you'll be able to figure out what your manufacturer calls them. It'll be something similar, presumably. Now, in episode 376, I did talk about one of these controls, which is generically known as frame interpolation. Um, And what that does is it takes the frames coming from the signal. And if there are 24 of them per second, as in movie signals, it will synthesize frames in between the actual frames. And result in a 60 frame per second or 120 frame per second, depending on your TV uh, image on the screen. Now that sharpens up motion detail. So if there's something in motion on the screen and you turn on frame interpolation, uh, it will look a lot sharper. But it also introduces an artifact called soap opera effect. And many people really hate that because it makes it look like it was filmed on video, like a soap opera. So generally speaking, I say turn it off. Most people don't like it. If you do, more power to you. Go for it. Um, But filmmaker mode in particular will turn it off. And these other movie uh, cinema modes probably will too. Um. One of the controls that I want to talk about that uh, is pretty important is called image cropping or framing or, or image size or screen size. And what you want to do is you want to set that 
to a setting that says something like one to one or just pixel in whatever the name of it is, you want each pixel in the image, in the signal coming in, the video signal coming into the TV to be mapped to one and only one, the exact corresponding pixel on the screen. You don't want there to be any cropping of the edges of the picture or any zooming. If there, if there will undoubtedly be a setting in there called zoom, avoid it like the plague because it will cause the picture to zoom, just like it says. But it'll crop out detail on the sides and top and bottom, probably. And it will make the image look softer. It will lose detail. And that's the one thing you really don't want to do is lose detail. Now, in episode uh, 380, I explained how to use a setup disk to set some of the basic picture controls. And the setup disk, the one I use, is from Spears and Munsell. It's called UHD HDR Benchmark. If you have a high definition 1080p TV, they make an, a high definition benchmark Blu-ray. Uh, the one I use is a UHD Blu-ray, uh, which is 4K resolution, UHD resolution. And in either case, you want to find the image cropping or framing pattern on that disc and display it on your TV. And it looks like this. Um, you can see uh, there are these numbers along the top, bottom, and the sides. And that tells you how many pixels in from the edge of the live image each of those lines is. So at the number one, you have is one pixel in, two is two pixels in, three is three pixels in, and so on. You want to be able to see the end of each of those bars, um, the one, the two, the three. If you can't, then your TV is expanding or zooming the image, maybe only slightly, maybe only a few pixels. Another way to tell is looking at the uh, center um, shaded areas. And if the TV is expanding or zooming even a little bit, you're going to see some weird artifacts in those gray bars in the middle. Uh, that's called moiré uh, interference or moiré patterning. patterning. And that's another clue that you don't have the right setting in your, uh, in your pixel f screen size or um, in, in that setting called screen size or aspect ratio. So if displaying this image, you can try all the different settings in that aspect ratio or screen size and see which one gives you, lets you see all the pixels all the way to number one and does not show any moiré in these gray bars. And that's the setting you want because that will give you the most detail. It'll show you everything that's in the image and it won't crop anything away from the image. So that's one of them. Um, another important one is called backlight on LCD TVs, sometimes called OLED light on OLED TVs. Um, if it's set too high, it can cause eye strain and headaches. If it's set too low, the image will just look dim. So this is not one to set with a test pattern. You just want to set it for comfort, really. And it also depends on the amount of ambient light in the room. So if there's a lot of light in the room, you want to set that control higher. And if you're in a dark room, you want to set it lower. Uh, so it may be something that you play with a little bit, depending on how much light's in the room at any given time. Now, another related control in the menu system is going to be called something like ambient light sensor, or ambient light, uh, which there's a little sensor on the TV. And if there's a lot of light, it increases the brightness, maybe the backlight uh, or the contrast control. And if there's not very much light, it, it lowers them automatically. Don't do it. Turn it off. We've spent some time setting those 
parameters, the contrast, the brightness controls in particular in episode 380, and that's where they should stay. So turn the ambient light sensor off. Another one to turn off that's somewhat related is called contrast enhancer. Once again, the TV is trying to, to see what, what would be best, but TVs, even though they're called smart TVs, they're not that smart. So turn it off. It really does more harm than good. It expands the contrast unnaturally, in this case, the contrast enhancer. Another related one is called black adjust or black enhance. Turn that off too, because it messes with the black levels. And that's really critical for those to stay steady in order for the rest of the picture to come out of black and pop and look, look good. Black is like the canvas of video, right? In painting, white is, is the canvas is white. But in video, the canvas is black and the picture is painted on top of black. And so if black is changing, depending on various conditions, the overall brightness of the image, for example, uh, then it's going to look like the canvas is changing and that's going to be disconcerting. I really don't like it. I suggest you turn it off. Another control that uh, is also related to this is called peak luminance generically might have some other name in your tv but it's uh, called something like that and again you want to turn that off because it can if you turn it on and sometimes it has different stages like low medium high uh, and if you turn it on to one of those settings it's going to increase the peak brightness but we've already set the peak brightness in the contrast control and so if you raise this peak luminance, it could cause what's called clipping. You'll lose detail in the bright parts of the picture. They'll just be washed out white. Whereas if you didn't have this on, you'd be able to see slight gradations in the level of white. So I really recommend turning that off. Uh, noise reduction. Here's another one that you might be tempted to turn on. Well, I want to reduce the noise, right? Yes and no. More no. Because the TV is not smart enough, really, to know what is noise and what is, say, film grain. If a movie has been shot on film or in a digital camera with a film emulator, with film emulation software or processed in post-production with film emulation software, it'll, it'll have a somewhat grainy look to it. Now it's subtle. It's not going to be, you know, like a 1920s film. It's, but it's going to be there. And a lot of filmmakers really want you to see that. That's part of the cinematic experience. And turning on noise reduction will get rid of that. It'll also soften the picture. And again, like I said before, you really want as much detail as you can get in an image because that's what we pay to buy a high definition or an ultra high definition TV for. We want that detail. And noise reduction very often reduces it, makes it makes the image softer and uh, makes it unfortunate that we spend all that money on that TV. Uh, finally, I want to mention a, mo a control called HDR mode, um, which really just tells the TV to display HDR or not. And I generally recommend that you keep that on auto or automatic because when the TV receives a signal that's high dynamic range, uh, you want it to be able to display that. Now, this is only going to be for UHD TVs. It's not going to be on HD TVs because those don't have high dynamic range. But uh, UHD TVs, more modern 4K UHD TVs, do play or are able to display HDR. And you want them to do that when they receive an HDR signal. A lot of TVs have uh, HDR... Uh, post-processing, if you will, if they receive a signal that isn't 
high dynamic range. They can sort of emulate high dynamic range, pretend it's high dynamic range. Now that's kind of a personal preference thing. If you want, if you like the way that looks, then great, turn it on. Um, if you don't, then turn it off. It's somewhat like frame interpolation, which is where we started here in this episode. If you like frame interpolation, it's adding stuff that's not in the original signal um, to make it sharper. When, and as I've said, we want we like sharp, we like detail. But if it adds an artifact like soap opera effect in the case of frame interpolation, then uh, maybe it's not worth it. In the case of artificial or synthetic HDR, uh, the same the same caveat applies. Uh, you want to look at it, see if you like it. If you do, great. If you don't, turn it off. That's much more of a personal preference thing. So I'm not going to say do this or don't do that. But in the other cases that I've mentioned to here today, uh, in the for the most part, all of these quote unquote enhancements, you just turn them off. They they do more harm than good. They really do. And so to see the content as the creators intended, turn all those things off. If you select filmmaker mode, they'll all be off anyway, almost guaranteed. If you select movie mode or cinema mode, something other than filmmaker, they'll probably be off. But we don't know for sure. So I suggest you go into the menu and see. Check it out. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Home Theater Geeks. If you'd like more, you need to be a member of Club Twit, which costs only seven bucks a month, and that gives you full access to everything the club has to offer, including all podcasts ad-free and access to the club Discord. Or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for $2.99 a month. You can also get the ad-free audio version for $2.99 a month on Apple Podcasts. New episodes drop every Thursday via Club Twit and Apple Podcasts. With full club membership, you can even watch us record the show live. Just keep an eye on the events tab in the club discord for the schedule. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of home theater geekitude. Until then, geek out.